Dr. Michael Knen, surgeon at the Medical University of Vienna, spoke in a plenary lecture about the role of bisphosphonates in breast can cancer. He presented an explanation for the mixed trial results with bisphosphonates in this setting. Could you explain why there are doubts about the effect of bisphosphonate for the prevention of bone metastasis in this setting? Well, yes, the reason why this is uh, controversial and has been debated by uh, many people is that we have controversial trial results. We do have large trials indicating that there is effective prevention of bone metastasis in breast cancer. And we do, ha we do also have other trials uh, which are equally large, uh, which don't show uh, this effect. So I kind of understand why some people are critical um, of the previous assumption that this would work. And how can the mixed re results of the trials with bisphosphonate be explained? Well, when you take a close look on these uh, trials, there's obviously huge differences in terms of what patients were included, or what agents have been used. Um, and when you really put everything together, it becomes very clear um, that the effect is present in what we call a low estrogen environment. So this is postmenopausal patients or younger uh, breast cancer patients who have been rendered postmenopausal by uh, drugs like goserlin for ovarian function suppression. Um, so this explains why in premenopausal patients with active ovarian function, this ob obviously does not work, and there is some theoretical background to that end because the ovaries in the premenopausal state they produce not only estrogen but also other hormones, particularly inhibins, which would be in the way of that bone turnover lowering microenvironment silencing effect of, of bisphosphonates. So basically that's, uh, to me at least, a very convincing reason uh, why we saw such differential results in these large clinical trials. What's the importance of the microenvironment in the bone marrow? Well, many of this is speculation, but we do have also pretty good research in identifying the interaction between the bone marrow microenvironment, um, the immune system, and potentially tumor cells who might end up there. Nowadays, many of us believe um, that it is the bone marrow which acts as a sanctuary for tumor stem cells, particularly in early breast cancer, providing an area where these cells can go to a quiescent state and survive for prolonged periods of time in order to come back at some point later and unfortunately cause relapse, metastasis, and eventual death of our patients. So um, the microenvironment produces and releases factors, and bone cells are particularly important in that, which assist in either activating dormant tumor stem cells or suppressing them further. Um, so rendering the microenvironment more fertile or more hostile could actually make the difference whether a patient experiences relapse or not. So we believe, and that's not our idea, it's an old idea, it goes back to the 19th century, um, that impacting on the microenvironment might at least be equally important as directly attacking tumor cells. Okay, a, me a meta-analysis presented by Dr. Coleman this afternoon looks further into this question. Do the results support the idea that a low estrogen environment is an important factor? Definitely. In this uh, meta-analysis, uh, which I consider final on the subject, because we managed to um, get data from almost all patients who ever in the world have been treated within adjuvant bisphosphonate trials. So this is more than 20,000 patients. And it clearly shows that any benefit is confined to patients in a low estrogen environment. Postmenopausal patients and premenopausal patients rendered postmenopausal by ovarian function suppression. In this very important group, I mean, that's three out of four patients uh, in countries like the Netherlands, Austria, or the United States, um, we see a highly significant reduction in um, the occurrence of bone metastases, and maybe more importantly, we see a 17% improvement 
in breast cancer mortality. That means that basically one out of six deaths from breast cancer can be avoided if we treat postmenopausal patients with adjuvant bisphosphonates. What are the implications of these findings for the treatment of postmenopausal women with breast cancer? Personally, I believe that after this final result, this is really going to be practice changing. Uh, we have the problem that uh, bisphosphonates are not licensed uh, uh, in the adjuvant setting for any anti-cancer activity. However, in uh, healthcare systems where off-label use is possible, these drugs are all generic, so they're very cheap. I think um, that this is going to change the standard of care in a way that all patients who can be considered low estrogen at least should be offered bisphosphonates for some period of time in the adjuvant treatment. And that's quite a change to the controversial situation we had until today. Okay, Dr. Knen, thank you very much for this interview. Thanks for inviting me.